Okay, what I want to do in this tutorial is to build a, a, a text effect that's going to have uh, behind this mask, going to have stars twinkling uh, off and on behind the, um, the mask that you see here, and then and that will happen all the way through all of the text, and then at certain selected critical points like there, 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 perhaps there, and maybe there and there, we'll have a, a highlight twinkle star uh, in the final effect. Now to do this we're going to have two AVIs that we build. The first one's going to be the stars that go behind the text and I'll start that off just by putting a couple of dots right there to define a path. Move over here to pick Stardust from a point from the presets that come with HLP and we'll apply that and now you'll see we have four paths and if we test that effect it looks like this. Not bad, except all the stars are going out radiantly, and I'd rather have them be rather random inside of the, or behind the text. So let's stop that right there, and I'm going to add a new path. I'm going to put it up here in this corner, and I'm going to apply the preset to that, and a new path again, and put it up here in this corner, and apply the preset, and a new path down here in this corner. Also apply the preset and a new path over here and apply the preset. Now we've got 20 paths and they're scattered around in five different locations on the screen. If we test the effect now you'll see that we're going to get stars generated from those five origination points and eventually they're going to intersect and once they do it's not going to look as though stars are moving out radially from any given spot. What you're going to see is stars coming in underneath this text from just about everywhere. So let's stop that right there. Since I'm going to use this as a mask, what I'd like to do is, uh, oh, one more thing before I do that though, you'll notice that the path duration is only two seconds. Now that's going to happen pretty quick in the, in, the, uh, in the real world once this thing renders out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend that a little bit and give it a duration of about eight seconds. And I'll apply that to all paths. So now all 20 paths have an eight second duration. It won't change the appearance of anything, it'll just make it last longer. So what I'm going to do next, since I want to use this thing as a mask behind the text, I'm going to go and change the background to a solid black. And then you can see that my test effect, or when I do a test effect, I'll see the same thing we had before, only now it's on a black background. Now, when these get into where they're sort of completely homogenous across the screen, then I'm going to elect to start my manual build and now the as you can see the bit counter per, per, or the bitmap counter progressing here the uh, the program is now generating these bits now there's thousands of stars as you can see 3200 of them right now moving around so there's a lot of calculations so this this bitmap counter isn't advancing very quickly right at the moment um, mostly because there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes but you know this thing will it will eventually we probably wasted um, a second or so of the uh, of the uh, total eight seconds uh, waiting for the stars to homogenize so uh, I would guess it will probably have 210 frames in this this uh, AVI for about a seven second AVI when we're finished keeping in mind that we manually started a little bit late I'll go ahead and uh, start and, and end this right now and and uh, of course, when all these this bitmap is or all these bitmaps are built, I'll simply go and build an AVI with them, and that'll give me the star pattern that we're looking for. Okay, now that we've got the background stars complete, I've started a new project and reloaded the Merry Christmas text. And what I want to do this time is I want to have a, a, a little bit different effect. I want to put like right on this little corner here, this Y, kind of a trailing um, logical spot for a, a, a highlight to happen. I'm going to put a little star, and I don't want this thing to uh, spread out very far, so I'm going to move it to a glyph flyout distance of one. I really want the thing to be a very short duration, so it flickers. So I'm going to give it a time of about a tenth of a second. Uh, its duration, I'll set it to eight to match what we had on our. Uh, on our background star pattern and notice here on the glyph initiation interval right now it's set at one meaning it's going to fire a glyph every frame of the of the uh, AVI now I really don't want that if I want this thing to flicker I want it to be a number something like 20 and uh, also I don't want it to fade out I want it to flash on and off so I'm going to click that off now notice if we run this test effect what we'll get here 
is we'll see this star flashing on and off right there on that little spot where we gave it a, its initiation. Okay, if we stop that there rather than go through all eight seconds of it. Now what we'd want to do is proceed to pick some other spots. So we'll go with a new path and maybe put one all right there and another new path and put one right there. Notice every path has to have two, by, or two dots or it doesn't uh, constitute a path. And we'll put one right there and a new path right there. Now we've just created five identical paths. That's probably not a good idea because we don't want them all to turn on and off at the same time. So rather than have uh, a 20 uh, frame interval for every path, here on number five I'm going to give it something like, oh let's say 22. And then I'll go to a previous path which is number four and I'll give it 24 and a previous path from that and we'll give it 26 and the previous path from that and we'll give that one 28. So now we've got paths 20 through 28 and if we turn the test on we'll see that these things flicker around at different intervals so that there's some randomness to it all. Uh, if we go ahead and uh, now go even one step further and we take a new path and I'm going to put one right here on this corner again this time, I'm going to go down and pick a different kind of a star. And uh, how about a diagonal star like that? It'll have an 8 second interval. I don't want it to have the exact same flash rate as the one that I just put. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to give it some kind of a goofball number like 15. I'll go uh, odd numbers this time. So the next time I'll go to a new path and I'll go over here. And again, it's still going to be the diagonal star. And I'm going to give it a number like 17. And then I'll do another new path and put it right there and give it a number like 19. And another new path and I'll stick him right on top of there. Give it a number like, oh let's jump a little bit, 23. And another new path and put him right on the same spot again. And we'll make him, oh, 27. Now what this is going to do is these things are going to flash on and off and they're going to flash on and off with different kinds of stars. So we'll play the effect so you can see what we got here. And that's the kind of uh, effect that you'll wind up with by putting these 10 paths down on Merry Christmas. Uh, obviously I'd do the same thing down here on Christmas, but for right now, just in order to speed this up, you get the idea of where we're going with this thing. I'll just stop right here and once I would put the new stars on all of these, I'd go ahead and build the bitmaps. Uh, they're all going to last eight seconds, and uh, and then I'd uh, build the AVI to match what we did before in time. So I'll stop that right now and show you that what this effect looks like when it's all put together. I'm going to use Producer to show you how this thing would go together to make one really pretty cool looking text effect. Okay, now that we've built the two AVIs in Highlighter Pro, the next step, of course, is to bring them into an editor and put it all together. Um, you'll notice that uh, we have, um, I'm, I'm electing to do this in Producer, and one of the things I always like to do in Producer before I do anything is to add just a, a blank slide, just so that the effect doesn't just immediately appear on the screen. So usually about a blank slide with a duration of one and maybe two on a nice crossfade turns out to be a nice effect. Um, we will be needing our mask that we built or that, that we used in the um, in the uh, Highlighter Pro segment of this. So I'm just going to drop this on the uh, on the timeline, and then I'm also going to move up to where we built our uh, AVIs, and that I named them Christmas Stars and Christmas Stars One. So I'm going to select both of those and use the Control key to drop them on the same slide as where the uh, Merry Christmas white on black mask is. Uh, it'll take producer a couple of moments here to uh, load these guys because it has to go through its own compression scheme uh, or that uh, things work well in, um, in presenter for playback. So while this is going on I'm going to pause. There now producer has those loaded and if we go in and look at the uh, layer stack we'll see that we have the uh, two AVIs and the Merry Christmas White on Black JPEG. Now I'd like for both of these two to be used as masks and I want them to mask sort of a gold color so I think what we'll do first is that I'll just add a nice solid color here 
We'll pick a nice color that's in the gold region. No, not there. How about right there? And it has to be fairly light so so the stars twinkle. And that's uh, as good as any. It doesn't have to be quite exact. Just some nice uh, light yellow color. And we'll set that as uh, being the solid color that we want. And since there's two of these, one for the twinkling stars and one for the star background, I'm going to duplicate that and I want to use that for, the, for my color for both. Now keep in mind the um, the twinkling stars on the highlight points these are going to be on top of everything so I'm going to put that up as the uh, as the number one uh, layer and it's going to be functioning as a mask against this solid color also then I need the Merry Christmas mask to hide most all of the background stars that we've we've put uh, in, in the uh, first AVI that we built in Highlighter Pro. So let's move that up to there. And then the AVI star mask that is the star background mask is going to also function as a mask and it's going to be over the solid colors. Now, unfortunately, this thing is just sewing through so this is going to have to be, or, or just just blanking out everything below it because it's not it's just a solid JPEG. So it's going to have to be turned into a mask as well. And what we will do in order to, um, to affect that is I'm going to insert here another uh, slide. And I'll give it a, um, a solid color. Oh, it can be anything, but yeah, Christmas, let's pick red. And we'll give it more of a uh, burgundy color. We'll set the color and insert that right there. So when it's inserted, now, if we turn this into a mask, you'll notice that uh, it's casting the red down only where this is white on black. Now, that's not the effect that I want. What I really want to do is I want all this out. I want everything else to be red. Unlike this, I want the letters to be cast through, whereas this is this background field would be to be red. So the simplest way to do that is just to invert the uh, the mask the, and what we'll see now f finally is with that mask inverted we wind up with a red background the stars coming through the highlight stars but they're still on black so that's not quite good uh, to fix that problem I'm going to go in and um, I'm going to add another layer another solid layer and I'm going to pick something in the same hue as what our stars are, only I'm going to make it darker. Maybe not quite that dark, maybe something about like that. We'll set this color then and we'll add that layer. Once that layer is added now, the trick with this thing is to move it down to the bottom. So when it goes down to the bottom, we will now see that we have achieved the point of having a red background. We've got a gold lettering with stars and the highlight twinkles. So if we put that all together it would play uh, with these stars twinkling behind and these these uh, or moving behind and these uh, highlight stars twinkling on and off. But one thing we might want to do that would be even more um, impressive is to take this this solid color and we're just going to get rid of that red and in its place I'm going to add another image. Now I have another image in here called Merry Christmas Background and um, that is right here and what it is is a more festive holiday looking uh, arrangement. I can go back now and turn Merry Christmas Mask back on and if you look down you'll see now that we have Merry Christmas with the um, the highlighting and the stars behind. The star, the, the highlighting flickers and the star field passing behind the letters. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of time to this slide because a second isn't going to quite do it. Let's add it about eight seconds so you can get to see what we have here. And if we move off here and I'll move this up so you can see the entire playback area. And we now just tell producer to play. What you'll see is the final effect where we have the gold lettering with stars twinkling behind or moving behind and the twinkles out here.
Oh, you notice that those turned off a little soon. And the reason that is, is because I didn't extend the time of those stars as well. If we go up here, I think what we want to do is they're all twinkling very quickly. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to tell the producer to slow those down. Let's slow those down to about 50% on that one. And we'll go to this AVI and slow it down to about 50% as well. Now when both slowed down to 50%, if we move back up and play again, we'll start it in the black so that you see a, a crossfade into it. And now when it plays through, you'll see the stars twinkling, the background stars moving beneath the text, and this will go on for about 8 seconds until everything's done and we do a nice fade to black. And that's about all there is to making an effect like that. Now that we've built this effect, it would be good to save it and reuse it again and again in future shows. All that needs to be done is to change the image which was masked as the background, like this.